work on it on your own. Okay, uh, we're looking at special angles. Angles that are more special than others. I think, first of all, we're going to work in degrees because I think this adds to the confusion. Really, you've, you've looked at this before. It's just looking at these two triangles and using those to find some trig ratios instead of your calculator. Your calculator, you can find the ratio for any angle you want. But some of them that come up a lot, it's helpful if you just know them. And you can use these little triangles to just know them. First of all, I'm going to work in degrees here, so this calculator is in degree mode. If you want to know the sine of 37 degrees, it tells you. If you want to know the sine of 98 degrees, it tells you. Right? You can put anything in there. If you want to know um, what, if you want to go backwards now, if you want to know what uh, what angle has a sine ratio of 0.6, right? You can go backwards with sine inverse of 0.6. Oh, I'm not going to put the whole thing in, but I'll just put a bit of it. And it's pretty close to that 37. So you know that those two functions exist. We're going to use uh, something different here for certain angles. Certain angles that come up in various places all the time. Uh, you've looked at these two triangles before. Uh, one looks like this. I'm not going to necessarily get it exactly correct, but one of them looks approximately like that. And one of them looks approximately like this, half a square. I didn't quite get it right, especially since on the screen it looks different. But if this is if this is half of a square here, you can say that each of those are one, or you can say that each of them are ten, as long as you say that they're the same thing. Okay. Um, so these two triangles here, if you take half a square, I mean the pictures are down here. If you take half of a square and you just say that the sides are one each, this angle happens to be how much? 45 degrees. This angle up here happens to be 45 degrees as well. And if you use Pythagoras, you can find the length of that side. What's the length of that side? It is square root of 2, right? Because you do 1 squared, 1 squared, square root of that. So it's square root of 2. This triangle over here, by the same reasoning, if you take this, this is half of an e or half of an equilateral triangle. So all of these sides are two. That's two. If that bottom piece is two, then this piece is one, right? If you take half of this, that's a one. And so you're just looking at this one side of it. You're not looking at that. How long is this missing piece over here then? How long is this piece? Yeah, it's square root of. 2 squared minus 1 squared, right? Root 3. I'm glad that you guys can see that's root 3 without having to do all the work for this. That's helpful. If you know those two triangles, then you can do something different to come up with the sine of 30 degrees or the cosine of 30 degrees or whatever, right? Instead of going to the calculator, okay, we can go to the calculator, but if you want to know the sine of 30 degrees, you put it in like that. It's 0.5. But the other way you can do that is if you know this triangle and you know that, well, I have a triangle here that has uh, this ratio that I know. No matter how big you make the triangle, that ratio is always going to be the same. This angle is how much and this angle is how much here. Which one of those is 30 degrees? The smaller one, right? Because if it's an equilateral triangle, they're all 60. So then this is half of that. So this is 30. If you want to know the sine of 30, you can get it from the calculator. Or you can get it by knowing if that's 30, the sine ratio is the opposite side over the hypotenuse, right? Opposite side over hypotenuse. So it's going to be 1 half, which is the same as what the calculator tells you. This is just coming up with a value without using the calculator, okay? In, in today's world where technology is everywhere, I realize that Maybe there's not always a use for this, but you, one of the outcomes of this course is you're going to be expected to know how to come up with trig ratios for special angles without using the calculator. If you wanted to know the cosine ratio for 30 degrees, 
Well, you need to look and say, well, that one's the adjacent over the hypotenuse. So you'd write that as root 3 over 2. When we go and find that on the calculator, if you write down that the cosine of 30 is whatever it comes up with here, it comes up with a decimal, right? 0 0.866. If I'm, if I'm using the calculator, I can't say it equals 0 0.866. Because even if I write all the decimals from the calculator, that's a that's an approximate value. This is called an exact value. So when someone talks about exact values of trig ratios, that's what you mean. Writing things where it's you know using root signs or whoops, or if you're talking about angles using fractions of pi, this is an approximate value because it's rounded off. So we're going to come up with exact values for all the different things and see how to use this. There's not a lot of different things that come up because there's only two triangles and there's only a limited number of ratios that you can come up with. It looks like I've asked you to fill in a lot here. Well, not by that page, but... Now, I think I... When I made this, I made a mistake by getting you to going to write, write to uh, fractions of pi. I think it'd be helpful first if you went through and did it with degrees so that you went through and wrote angles like this, 30 and all the ones related to 30. I have pictures later on. If that's 30, what's another angle? What's the angle over here that's related to that? I'll get crazy here and make a color coordinator. What is that one? 150. And then what's the one in quadrant 3 that's related to 30 degrees? 210, right? So if you're looking at all the different angles that are related, and then the one over there would be 330, right? And then I should have written the first one, which was blue. That is 30. If you're writing all those angles, so if you're doing 30 degrees, 150 degrees, oops, 330 and 210. If you're writing the sine and the cosine, Sine of that, cosine of that. So we're calling that, that's theta. We're going to write down the sine and the cosine for each of those angles without using a calculator. You can check it on the calculator if you want, but I think we should start by using degrees instead of getting to radians. If you want to know that, you need to, you need to know those two triangles. And you need to look at them from the correct angle, right? This is 45. This is 30. And this is 60. So if we want to know the angles for 30 degrees and the ones related to it, here's where we're going to be looking at the triangle from. You're going to be using this triangle, and you're going to be looking at it from this point of view here. The only other fact you need when you're looking at sine is this. You need to know that whoops, for the, the sine ratio, where is it positive and where is it negative? Remember that the sine ratio tracks the... Which coordinate does it track? The x coordinate, the y coordinate. Which one does it? Which one is it equal to? Sine of this is opposite this value, right? Over the hypotenuse. If that's a unit circle, it's just equal to the y coordinate. Sine is sine is equal to the y coordinate in a unit circle. Sine changes according to the y coordinate. So sine is positive above the axis here. That's where sine is positive because the y coordinate is positive up there. Sine is negative down here because that's where the y coordinate is negative. So if you combine those two facts, if you know you can come up with the exact value using the triangle and you know where it's positive or negative, you can pretty quickly fill these in. If you know that this is 1 and this is 2 and this is root 3. If it's sine, we don't even need this, right? Because we're never going to use the adjacent if we're talking about 30 degrees. We might need that if we talk about cosine or 60 degrees. But it's always going to be, for all of these angles, it's going to be this value, isn't it? It's going to be a half, except sometimes it's going to be positive, sometimes it's going to be negative. Which ones are going to be negative? Yeah, the quadrant 3 and quadrant 4, right? If you know the ratio in that triangle, you know a lot of different angles, actually. If you want the cosine ratio, 
Well, now we have to change our picture, and I've come to the end here. I lied. I guess I need to take more than 10 minutes.